get results when we pray, but there are conditions that we need to meet for our prayers to work. Things that we have to make sure that we are doing to guarantee that our prayers work. Prayer has gotten a bad rap and people stopped doing it because they didn't get results. Well, it's usually because they prayed the wrong things or they prayed out of context. Amen. You can't get mad at your husband and pray that he leave and don't come back. That prayer is not, God is not listening to that one. Amen. And you can't pray for him if you mistreating him. And you can't expect God to do for you if you mistreating her. If you mistreating folk in the church, God ain't answering your prayer. Why would he? He can't trust you. So, we're going to talk about this today because this was heavy on my spirit this week. Hindered prayers. I always check myself because I want to make sure my prayers are working. Amen. Amen. I believe our corporate prayer here at ABC are responsible for a whole lot of state legislature here in Texas. I, you ain't, can't nobody make me take that out of my mind. I believe it. I believe that we have steered the hand of government here in Texas with our fervent prayer. Praying in faith and believing certain things that have happened. So I trust prayers and I believe every time we pray, I say that, that we believe that our prayers, that God hears us when we pray. Amen. Corporately. Now, as an individual, you got to make sure God hears you. Amen. You got to make sure God hears you. You know, the thing I've learned in my many years of serving the Lord or being in Christ or whatever, I've learned that the key to prayer is focus. Focus. That's why we call the podcast Focus Prayer. Focus on it. Focus on what you're praying about. Don't pray all over the place. You know, that may be how you feel good and whatever, but I believe the focus prayer, let me focus in on this, this that I'm seeking God for in this setting. And that seems to yield the greatest results, but it won't yield the result if I have ought against somebody. Amen. God will say, shut up, go talk to them. Go make that right or it's not happening. You see what I'm saying? So there's a responsibility for us. AdamandBeliever.com forward slash hinderedprayers.pdf. Amen. Before I get in this message, I just want to thank all the brothers for coming out yesterday. After the swap, after you had worked in the swap and everything, Big Mike, thank you so much. Brought his truck out and we were able to move my son. into his gym yesterday. <laughs> Whose gym is it? It's his gym. <laughs> Amen. Don Fit is on the map now. And listen, now, you know, I don't care if y'all don't like this. Get jealous, please, because I'm going to say it because I have the microphone. When you have a mic, you talk about your kids. But I'm proud of him because, hey man, he's a chip off the old block. He's a big chip though. He is the block. Hey man, he's the block off the old block. But that's all right. But I appreciate just his work ethic and we got to try to slow him down. He works so hard. But I appreciate it. Now he got his own spot. So, hey amen. Be helping people because that's what he's doing. Helping people stay alive. Amen. That's ministry. That's your problem now, some of y'all. You think you got to have the mic to have ministry. That's ministry. Helping people stay alive. What the preacher going to do if he's full of cake every time he get ready to preach? Somebody need to take the fork from him. Amen. You going to have the mic or the fork? Which one is it? More might, less fork. Oh, I know I'm stepping on big toes. That's all right. 
No, brother, I need you. I need, no, I need you to exercise your faith. You know what that means? Get out and run. Amen. The only time you active, if the only time you active is when you preaching, you ain't going to live long. Get in church and just, oh, <laughs> brother, you need to do that 18 times every morning in your house. Work out with a mic. If that's what got you going, just get a mic and run with it. Hey, Amen. <laughs> I'm being for real. Amen. Amen. And those are the ones scared to death of COVID. You should have been scared of Williams. Chicken. The chick, somebody throw a chicken box at you. You should have took off running. But they scared of COVID because they didn't stop eating chicken. With all the sides. All the sides at Williams are fried. You're a preacher of the gospel. Got a frequent bias card at Williams. Amen. 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 So that's why we going on this sugar fat. We gonna tell. We gonna let the devil know we're in charge of our bodies. Amen. Gluttony is a sin too. Amen. They always talking about the sexual sins. Well, gluttony leads to sexual sin. High sugar intake make you feel kind of fruity. You turn it into fruit. <laughs> Curb that appetite. Amen. You won't have a severe case of the can't help it. I can't eat just one. Uh-huh. That's your motto in life. You can't stop anything you're doing. Discipline starts with the fork. The Bible calls it a fast. It said fast. Discipline. If you want to discipline your flesh, it starts with the fork. I've preached today, but let me get into these slides. I got just a little more. All right. As believers, any believers in the house? So as believers... We must always consider the fact that what we do in the natural realm will affect how we relate to God in the spirit realm. Always, you know, I, I believe and you know, not, not to throw shade on the old church because the old church, man, so much of the old church was good. So much was good. They got a few things kind of misconstrued, but that's every church. Every church has some kind of error at some point, right? Because humans are a man. But I believe that one of the errors in the older church was they didn't put the two together, the natural and the spirit realm. They taught the spirit realm and people weren't equipped for application in the natural. So like I'm preaching against sugar, sugar, I never heard sugar preached against when I was growing up. As a matter of fact, all the cakes and pies was in the foyer. I still don't know what a foyer is, but I just remember them saying that. Get the cakes and the pies in the foyer. What's the foyer? That's the front. The foyer? The foyer and the foyer is the same thing? You know that meme you was, I was this years old when I found out? The foyer and the foyer. Ain't that something? Somebody's jaw was loose when they said that word. The foyer. But they, the cakes and the pies. Sister Buttermilk has some cakes and pies. She changed her name. She cooked so good. <laughs> she changed her name. The buttermilk. Yeah. And so that was never a balanced talk. They go on a fast and then right after the fast, make up for the cakes and pies that they missed. 
And we, you, the, the two weren't put together, but we have to understand that what we do in the natural has a spiritual consequence. Changes something spiritually. 1 Corinthians 15 and 46. But it is not the spiritual life which came first, but the what? The physical and then the spiritual. So the Bible's letting you know that the spiritual came after the physical. And in many cases, especially eating, they're one and the same. Why else would he tell you to fast and it f for a spiritual purpose? That's natural food. So how does that change anything in the spirit realm? Because it disciplines the natural. Changes your behavior so that you can be stronger in the spirit. Because the flesh warreth against the spirit. And they fight against each other. You want to curb your flesh? Stop eating. Amen. I mean, the, 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 the channels and pages you go on on Instagram going to change. You went from looking at girls' thighs to smoke thighs. Because you hungry when you fast. That's what a fast is. Amen. It'll curb your appetite. You stop lusting. Amen. After Morris Chestnut. Now you just want chestnuts. <laughs> Roasting on an open fire. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but that's, that's what a fast is. It curbs your appetite. Amen. So we have to learn that there is a connection. I have a whole video about it. Pharmacos, era man. I mean, it goes deep into this stuff. The alchemy and all of that. How even, man, it's so funny how prophetic that video was. Because now that's what they're using to control people. Alchemy. Remember Pharmacos? Pharmacia? Everybody posts that on the internet now. All oh, the end times going to be about pharmacia. Man, that was in era man too. Amen. 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 God warned you. So you got to keep that understanding. Our emotional issues can cause spiritual issues that can change our lives dramatically if not addressed. That's why in here, I'm going to try my best to address your emotional issue because your emotional natural issue is going to change the way you really relate to a spiritual God hurt, pain, trauma, betrayal, anger wrath, jealousy, hatred all get in the way of the Holy Spirit operating in our lives amen some of y'all can't lift your hands and praise God because of hurt, pain, trauma, betrayal anger, wrath, jealousy and hatred Amen. Some of y'all can praise God harder than anybody to cover up hurt, pain, trauma, betrayal, anger, wrath, jealousy, and hatred. I know I'm preaching. I know I'm preaching. It's an act. You got to stop acting and let God do what he needs to do. Because it's going to get you in trouble. Take your whole family down. Because you haven't dealt with it. Keep you from having a family because you haven't dealt with it. It's leaking out of every spiritual orifice in your life. Better deal with it. It's going to mess everything up. Ephesians 4 and 31. Let all, how much bitterness? All, all bitterness and wrath and anger, clamor and evil speaking. Be what? Put away from you. Clamor. Clamor. The Bible might as well have called that mess. Oh, mess. Why are you in mess? It's got to be put away from you. Evil speaking. All of it put away from you with all what? Malice. Malice. Prayer is a powerful tool for communicating with God and getting his will accomplished. However, we can drastically affect the outcome of our prayers by harboring issues in our hearts. See, you can fool people. But you can't fool God. But let me tell you, a tragic situation. The tragic situation is the person that have made their life to fool people, to make people think they're spiritual, 
they do the same thing to God. They've done it so much that they believe it themselves and come before God a certain way and God wants to expose their own heart to them. But he can't or he won't if you don't allow him to. Yeah, you've tried to appear so deep and come before God thinking you deep. And God is looking at you like you, you, you ain't even a tadpole pond. You're not deep at all. So you got to come before God like you are. Let him see how you are. Amen. The Bible says in James 15 and 16, the effectual fervent prayer of a what? Righteous. Availeth much. Righteous. Righteous. Now, righteous don't mean perfect. Amen. God said Noah was a righteous man. But Noah wasn't perfect. Amen. He got drunk. Amen. Wasn't perfect. The definition of righteous is of a person or conduct morally right or justifiable, virtuous. So this is the person that seeks for virtue and is justifiable. They are morally right, meaning that when they're wrong, they desire correction. Uh, that's righteous. You can be righteous and wrong as long as you allow for correction. Now when somebody comes and tries to correct you and can't correct you, you're unrighteous because you can't be righted. I'm preaching. You can't be righted. You're not righteous. A righteous person, especially from leadership and authority, can receive correction. Amen. None of us can stay completely in line all the time. So we have to have someone that can put us in line when we need to be in line. When you can't, you're unrighteous. Amen. I know I'm preaching. Folk don't like this kind of sermon. <laughs> That's right. God judges us by whether or not we are obedient to his plan for us. That's how he's judging you. Amen. He doesn't take away his plan because of moral failure or errors in our walk. So when you mess up, God don't snatch his plan for you. He included that in the plan. He's Alpha and Omega, so he already knew. So he included those moments, those times when you error, mess up, not yourself, fall short, whatever the case. He included all of those in the call. We all have sinned and need God's grace and mercy. Anybody in here have not sinned? Amen. I'm looking for an infant's hand. And it better be fresh out the womb. No, he had thoughts against the doctor when the doctor hit him. No, he sinned. <laughs> he was late. We all have sinned and need God's grace and mercy. But the righteous man is the man that can get up from his fall, repent, and do God's will in spite of his error. Amen. Now, righteous is, remember, one of the definitions was justifiable. Justifiable, shorten that, is just. A just person has been justified, right? And this scripture says, Proverbs 24 and 16, for a what kind of man? A justified, justifiable man, a just man, falleth seven times, which is, don't be counting. That's a hyperbole. That's just to give you, the, to, to mean that you can fall. Amen. Somebody's on the 430th time of forgiveness. Got about 60 left. 
out there and that's it. <laughs> Bible said 7 times 70. Got about 60 left. People crazy like that for real. I mean for real. Man. But he says a just man falleth 7 times. Amen. And I think Solomon wrote this, so we know he exceeded this particular passage. <laughs> he passed this meet, this limit. Amen. But the just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. There's a difference between a just person and a wicked person. There's a difference between error and lawlessness yeah God begins a work in us despite our imperfections and will continue the work until it is what completed but there are times or the, no but there are things that we do that hinder us and our answers to prayer we complicate things when we fall short or do things that get in our way of doing God's perfect will. Many of us are complicating things by our actions. Philippians 1 and 6 says, being confident of this very thing that he that hath begun a good work in you will do what? He's going to keep performing it. Even though you keep blowing it or falling short. You're falling short because what we start this conversation out with, you ain't dealt with who you really are. That's why in a church setting, we operate in grace and mercy because everyone is on a journey trying to get where they need to get. People come to this church to get worked on. That's the only reason you would come to ABC. Amen. The music is good and all that, but you got to sit and listen to these sermons. So most of the time you're here to be worked on. So that grace and mercy has to be extended to people. Because God is not going to stop working on them. Just like he didn't stop working on you. Amen. Amen. Like, like the old folk you say some of y'all was a booger burr. <laughs> and God extended grace and mercy. To get you to this point. Amen. So he says being confident in this. If he begins the good work, he's going to complete the good work. So I got to, as a pastor, guess what? I got to have confidence that he's going to complete the work in everybody in here. No matter how y'all acting. Yeah, that's, yes, my goodness. I have to pray that prayer. Lord God, help him, help him, help him, help him. Help! Help! All kind of helps. <laughs> Just all kind of postures. Yeah! Lord, they're getting on my nerves! Help them. Oh, Jay, Lord. But grace and mercy. Got you right here, brother. It's a journey. But yeah, <laughs> but yeah and I get the pleasure of watching you grow past things. Make better choices and decisions and just become who you're supposed to become. Somebody like, I mean, but who are you? The pastor. Good gracious. And I'm the pastor that you picked. People are crazy. So, I mean, so what does that make you? <laughs> What was I when you came here? Right. <laughs> but I get that opportunity and those are proud moments for me. That makes me feel great to see you just, oh, I remember when you would have done this, but now you do this. And that's a blessing. Amen. 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 But that's God beginning to work. And completing the work. And God's watch is not the same as ours. He's not on our time. For some people it takes longer because they've been through more. Some people it takes longer because they're just not as smart. Some people it takes longer because what they're dealing with is just 
super extra. Amen. So we take our time in a church. We let folks, hey man, I just got a man. Amen. That's what I have to do. What if I judged everybody in here on how they are right now? And the mistake I made when I first started pastoring for many years, when I first started, I would judge people based on how I felt they should be at that point. And that was wrong. That was wrong. Amen. I had to apologize to people. Man, because I tried to put you somewhere just because I wanted to see you there. You see what I'm saying? And you can't do that. But that's something you just have to learn, Pastor. I learned it. Amen. Now I know where folks are and I'm good with it. Be there until God moves you up. Amen. Don't you move. It's like Jumanji. Boy, if you try to cheat, you're going to turn it to a monkey. You better roll the dice and move like you supposed to move. But you move out of turn. <laughs> God wants us to follow him in his plan. And he wants our prayers to work and not be hindered. These obstacles can delay our blessings. He illustrates and expresses in his word the causes of our hindered prayers. Here they are. First cause of hindered prayer. If we waver or compromise, our prayers will be hindered. If you waver or compromise, that's what wavering is, compromising. Sometimes you're going to do the right thing, but sometimes for money or convenience or whatever, you're going to just sell God out. Your prayer is going to be hindered. Yeah. James 1 and 6 says it like this. But let him ask in faith, nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a sea, of, uh, like a wave of the sea driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man that wavers think that he shall receive what? Anything. Your prayers are hindered if you're wavering. If we are harboring unforgiveness, you got ought against somebody, Forget it. Prayers are going to be hindered. Amen. I knew this message was going to make some jaws tight today. Man, but that's, you know, that's what the word, the preach, like the old folks said, the preach word. That's what they used to call it. That's what the preach word is meant for. All that music and prayer, you know, that's fun. But the preach word going to dig in deep. Amen. So if you're harboring unforgiveness toward anyone, this is why you haven't heard from God in a while. This is why things seem to be getting progressively worse. Because you're carrying something against somebody. Mark 11 and 25. And when you stand praying, do what? Forgive. If you have what? All against who? Anybody. Anybody. That your father also which is in heaven may what? Forgive. Forgive you your trespasses. Folk hear it all the time. Just hear it so much that they just used to it. And then it happens. You have art. You haven't let something go. And you definitely see it in your prayer life. Oh, when I pray things happen. That ain't happened for years. Oh, I get results in my prayers. When? Not since you've been harboring that. I know. Hey. If a man is mistreating his wife, his prayers will be hindered. Uh oh. Yeah. Well, what do you mean, mistreat? Mistreating. Are you a treat? Then you a mistreat. Mistreat. See how she act when you give her a treat? Bring flowers or something. See, I have it. Well, the opposite of that is mistreating. Yeah, you're not treating her. You're not being considerate. You're not considering her. You, you just not. Amen. Amen. You mistreating her. You considering other folks. Treating other folks better. Man ain't supposed to treat anybody better than he treats his wife. Amen. 
that's a death trap. It's a pit. You're going to fall into it. So mistreating, if you're mistreating your wife, that's a reason why your prayers fall to the ground. First Peter 3 and 7 says, Likewise ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge, giving honor unto the wife as the weaker vessel, and as being heirs together of the grace of life, that what? Weaker vessel don't mean that you can out-wrestle her. Yeah. Weaker vessel means she need you to be stronger than her. That's what weaker vessel means. She needs your strength. She flourishes strong under your strength. Amen. If a woman fails to reverence her husband, her prayers are going to be hindered. Amen. Don't be in there praying loud, calling his name so he can hear you. And you don't reverence him. <laughs> you in there just loud. The whole neighborhood hear you. Calling his name. Oh God help him. Lord help him. Oh God he can't do nothing right. Nothing. Oh Lord. Ask him to fix the sink and he messed that up. Oh God. I told ask him to put air in the tire. He blew the tire up. Oh Lord. Help him. Rufus in there. Rufus, he in there now, Lord. Help him. You in the next room. He just sitting in there looking at TV. Because he know your prayer ain't going further than the room you in. He ain't worried about you. He ain't worried about nothing God going to do. No, God ain't going to do none of this. I know what my Bible say. This is out of order. And God ain't listening. <laughs> no. Titus 2 and 4. The older women must train the younger women to love their husbands and who? Their children. Amen. To live wisely and be pure. To take care of their homes. To do good. And to be what? Submissive to their husbands. Then they will not bring what? Shame. Boy, shamed when you pray and God don't do none of it. I know I'm preaching. That's okay. Somebody like, we get a holiness message every week. When we gonna have a praise service? <laughs> we in trouble, y'all. We in trouble. God is trying to clean the church up before he comes get, come and get us. So let him clean. Clean us all up, Lord. Amen. If we have idols or false gods in our lives, our prayers are hindered. Amen. You pledge Freemason and any of that stuff and you ain't denounced it, God ain't heard you since you did it. No, he don't hear you if you're under a false god. Matter of fact, he says a curse is on you. If you will not obey the commandments of the Lord your God according to Deuteronomy. But turn aside out of the way which I command you this day to do what? What are other gods? Any other God but the God of gods. So if you pledge, you pledge to a false God. A demon. If we are practicing sin, our prayers are hindered. Amen. Because it's hard to pray when you know you ain't right. Or it's hard to believe God for something when you know you're not right. And I'm not talking about folks without a conscience and you can just practice sin, live sin, and turn into a transgender and just live like that. I'm not talking about you. Your conscience is seared. You can't hear me no way. I'm talking about the person that when they sin, they feel bad. Yeah, it bothers them. It bothers you when you let God down. That's what I'm talking to. When you let God down, it's hard to pray. Definitely hard to believe him for something. Right. 
Can I talk to humans in here today? Boy, folks get so religious, they don't understand this talk. No evil have I done. You just did it when you sung that. Psalm 66 and 18. If I regard iniquity in my heart, what's going to happen? If we are not operating in God's will, our prayers are hindered. Amen. But you got to be operating in God's will. 1 John 5 and 14. And this is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything according to what? His will. He heareth us. So it has to be in his will. You have to be operating in his will. What is his will? Listen to last week's message. I told you. Amen. Amen. Finally, if we practice doing the things that God hates, our prayers are hindered and our blessings are stifled. If you're doing any of these, man, you might as well save that prayer and pray against these things you're doing. Amen. Don't be asking God for stuff and you're doing seven things that he don't like. If you're doing one of the things that he says he hates, how is he going to bless you? Why would God bless you and you the one that he's standing against? So you got to stop doing these seven things. What are these things? A proud look. You think you better than somebody. Man, why would God answer you? Amen. Let me tell you, as the pastor of the church, you ain't better than nobody. No. I'm not better than nobody and you're not <laughs> but let me just set the record straight just in case you were confused you thought because you done made a little money and you got some nice clothes and got a nice car that you better than somebody let me let me let you know that the rich man went to hell and the beggar went to the bosom of Abraham let me just set the record straight just because you have something don't make you somebody. These six things that the Lord hate, Proverbs 6 and 16. Yea, seven are an abomination, a proud look, a lying tongue. Stop lying. Just stop lying. Hands that shed innocent blood a heart that devises wicked imaginations and then feet running to the rucus mess feet running to mess a false witness she told me and I heard and if that 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 slotted block that's a false witness speaking lies Amen. It's always lies if you wasn't there. It's a false witness speaking. And he that soweth discord, pitching the brothers against each other. God hates that, and that's on his list of things he hates. And when you get down to pray and you do these things, you better ask for forgiveness for them all. And the thing is, you know when you did it. You know it when I start talking about it. You know you in this list. You can get mad at me if you want, but you in this list. You know it. You saw it. I said your name. Yeah, jumped on your row. So all we do is we ask for forgiveness. We done got mad at folks before. Anybody in here ever been mad at somebody? I'm talking about ready to box. Is that just me? I'm talking about the hands. You ready to put hands on somebody. Holy hands. I ain't going to lift them up. I'm going to put them up. Amen. We just need to settle this behind the church. Let's go. You know you done played that in your mind before. I know I have. I've seen myself boxing behind the church. Amen. 
but you got to get forgiveness for it. This is not who God made me. That's not who I am in 2023. I'm better now. I'm not a brawler. I know how to let bygones be bygones. I know how to understand human behavior. I know how to understand that some people are going through stuff. And when they're going through, I can't judge their actions. I can't judge their head movement and their eyes back and stuff. I don't know what they're going through. So I got to be sensitive and not jump on this list and get my blessings taken from me. Because then I got to watch everyone else prosper and do well and then I start feeling some kind of way. Well, Lord, why you do that? <laughs> hey, can I preach truth in here? Summary! That wasn't too bad. That was needed. Look at somebody and say, I needed that. Look at them and say, I needed that. <laughs> I needed that. Go on and manifest. We'll get it out. Tell them, Elder, we'll take you to the back. We take demons to the back. But we have service going on in here. Amen. If we are to live in God's abundant blessings, we must learn to avoid the things that hinder our prayers and do what is right in the sight of God. Yes, we can't act overly spiritual and expect to cover our issues up. We can't act overly spiritual. Don't think because you've been at church longer than somebody, you're more spiritual. We can't act overly spiritual. Don't think because you just got here, you got to prove your spirituality. I really hate that glad you came to visit brother oh uh, brother <laughs> Man, can I, what's your name can you say your name for you get slain oh, just, the power is just all oh I just feel it in here oh, oh, oh. somebody get him a coat <laughs> people do that they don't know how to gaze. They just think, you know, they haven't seen the videos and stuff, so he must be super duper spiritual. So I at least need to be super. And then how do you even articulate that and act that out? That's impressive. You're going to show me what's going on in the spirit realm? <laughs> uh, but we can't act overly spiritual and expect to cover up our issues. Why act spiritual when you can truly be spiritual? You can be spiritual. You can be spiritual without acting spiritual. <laughs> yeah. So many see the church and the church relationships as an opportunity to outshine one another or appear super spiritual to them. This puts people in a position where they cannot be helped or blessed. You can't help nobody that's super spiritual because they already know. God already told them. You know, brother, I really think you ought to. Uh -huh, I know. What was I finna say? You a swami? Look to see if a bottle is connected to you. You a genie of the lamp? Yeah. But it, put, it puts people in a position where you can't help them. You get frustrated and want to talk to them about nothing. Then you got to watch them. You just got to watch their demise because you can't help them. Because they're overly spiritual. Can't be edited. They cannot be helped because they would have to admit that they are not as perfect as they have tried to appear. And they are not blessed because they refuse to truly deal with what is hindering them. Amen. Let's. Look at somebody say let's. Let's not act like we are something when we are nothing. There will be times, listen y'all, when we struggle to pray. All of us. This is all of us. Listen. There will be times when we all struggle to pray. Struggle to believe. Struggle to do the right thing. There will be seasons where we feel alone. 
feel misunderstood and feel like giving up. There will be days when we don't feel valuable or feel rejected even by God. Welcome to the human race. Welcome to the human race. We will have those times, but the good times will always come back to show us that we have God's purpose, God's plan, and most of all, God's unconditional love. Every time, every time you went through a season like that, he brought love back. He showed you something that you couldn't do on your own. And you knew he loved you. This will reignite our prayers. Reignite our prayers. And give us the courage to remove all hindrances. So we can be fully restored back to him. This is the life of a believer. Let's not pretend. Let's not fake it. Let's not be hypocritical. Let's be real and live for him with all that we are. Keep praying and forsake all hindrances and your prayers will be answered. Amen. Amen. First Timothy 2 and 8 says, I will therefore that men pray where? Everywhere. <laughs> Lifting up filthy hands, dirty hands, unclean hands. No, this is specific. Lifting up holy hands, meaning you've cleaned yourself up with the power of God so that your hands are clean. Lifting up holy hands. And look at this part. Without what? Wrath. Wrath. Anger towards somebody else. A problem with somebody else. Without that. Lift your hands up without that. And doubting. Everyone stand to your feet. Don't pray against hindrances in your prayers. So you need that prayer, just come on up. Amen. I don't want nothing hindering my prayer. I don't want nothing in my way. I don't want to be feeling some kind of way about somebody. I don't want to be feeling some kind of way about the pastor. I want to be feeling some kind of way when he preach a message like this that makes me feel some kind of way. I want to be able to say, hey, yep, that's me. Let me get this out of my heart. Let me get this off my chest. Let me, man, let me get this. I'm suffering from something happened at another church before I even got here. But I'm acting it out here because this is all I have now. Hey, we got to get this out of us. Let God just pull it out. Man, I'm not going to be feeling this way in God's house. I'm going to be able to show love in God's house. I'm going to be able to love my enemies in God's house. I'm not even going to have enemies in God's house. That ain't my enemy. Disagreement don't make somebody your enemy. Just me, means a, an agreement needs to be made. That's it. That's all a disagreement is. So I need God to just fix this because I don't want my prayers hindered. Hindered. I don't want my prayers hindered. I want to receive what God has for me and my family. Nothing in the way. I came to ABC to get away from that. What has happened? I want no hindrances. Just bow your heads, everyone. Father God, we just thank you, Lord. Thank you for this message. Thank you for the message that speaks to our hearts and our issues and everything that is wrong with us. Thank you for a message, Father God, that exposes our weaknesses, our inconsistencies, exposes all that we are dealing with as humans. But God, because you made us, you know first that we're human. You know why we do what we do. You know why our minds are wired this way. You know what happened to us in our past in our childhood, what our parents did, what 
relatives did, what friends did. You know, Father God, why we have complexes, insecurities, issues. You understand the way our heart works. So, Father, we come before you right now, not being deep, not being spiritual, not being great, not being grand, not being special, not being something different. We're all the same. And we come before you as your people asking, that you will help us, God, deal with any hindrances that are in our lives, that are blocking your hand, that are blocking your blessings, that are blocking you from bestowing things upon us. So, Father, we ask, first, just forgive us, Lord. Come on, lift your hands up. Forgive us, Father God. Forgive us. Forgive us for what we said, what we did, what we thought. Forgive us for just the human side of us acting out first because it's first natural but now father god we want to apply what is spiritual the fruits of the spirit let them exude out of us father god in every situation give us the love the joy the peace the long suffering the gentleness the goodness the faith the meekness and the temperance to deal with situations so that there'll be no hindrances in our way in the name that is above every name we pray amen 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 rebuke all hindrances come on hug somebody and say I love you no hindrances this is your family hug your family members show family show family love you love you love you it's all good in the neighborhood it's all good no hindrances I want to see God do stuff for you this year like never before his blessings upon your finances his blessings upon your marriage blessing upon your children blessing upon every aspect of your life hindrance free in the name of Jesus in the name of